Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next session of the PML Reading Group. I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I assume some people will be joining us later with those few latecomers. Thank you again, Anton, for uh, presenting. And um, if you want to start, uh, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Today we will talk about clustering, which is pretty easy topic. Uh, so we will cover today different um, approaches to clustering, centroid-based, density-based, hierarchical graph models, and uh, distribution-based. Let's start from the definition, what is the clustering? <clears throat> Assume, as usual, that we have data points X1 and so on, X and capital um, from defined on arbitrary space. They could be images, they could be vectors of numbers and so on. And uh, we denote this set of points by X capital. The clustering task is to define a function A that assigns to each um, point x the number which corresponds to the cluster. So the goal is to learn the, to find the function a that maps our data set x into the um, numbers from 1 to k, where k is a hyperparameter, the number of clusters um, which we usually define in advance. And uh, this function should give the same class number or cluster number for similar objects. The question of course arises, what does it mean similar objects? And um, we will define later the uh, distance between the objects, but now let's talk about why do we need clustering at all. I see we have this um, artificial data set <clears throat> of points, and um, visually we can group them into these five clusters. Or we can say classes. Um, the, the difference is that classes usually are given, but the clusters, um, they, they don't have the order of the labels. It's also called unsupervised learning because we don't have labels for clustering. So the first um, goal of the clustering is grouping of our data points into clusters. Later, we can also assign the classes to these data points. And uh, it's used in semi-supervised tasks. The other um, application is the detection of outliers. For example, we have points far away from our cluster um, or we have a cluster only with one point, then we can um, consider it as outlier. And the other application is the creation of new features. Uh, for example, if the data are huge like images, we can um, apply clustering to reduce the number of features or to extract some new features. Uh, 
and uh, there are um, different uh, measures of the of how well can we um, cluster our data. Let's assume that we have some uh, numbers which we will call centers or centroids of the clusters c1 and so on ck um, they can be defined as um, the center of mass for example for the cluster then we can um, calculate the distance from our data point to the center of the class for each cluster k. So the brackets mean um, the function which is one or zero depending on the true value of the expression. So if we classified our data point as k, then this will be one. If we classified it as different class, then it will not. Um, at, <clears throat> didn't uh, appear in this sum. So it's just. Um, um, annotation. Which is useful. So uh, we can calculate the square distance from the point in our cluster K because of this um, factor to the center of the cluster and sum up over all the clusters. If I want to, um, to make our clusters compact, dense, then we should minimize this distance. The other um, measure of quality um, is the distance between clusters. So uh, we try to maximize the distance between points from different clusters. And there are different um, measures <clears throat> like done index. Um, intuition behind this measure is that we try to maximize the um, distance between clusters when I when I use capital uh, letters. Then I using the clusters so the distance between clusters can be defined in different ways like for example is this distance between centroids and the distance inside one class can be determined for example as the sum of distances to the centroid or the sum of distances between each pair of data points. So we maximize the distance between clusters. And these metrics are called internal evaluation metrics because we don't have access to labels. We use only internal data points. Now, uh, let's talk about the first most famous uh, algorithm, uh, which is called Keynes. Um, so this is a very simple algorithm. You can see it consists of these two steps. First, we initialize randomly clusters. Yeah, there is a modification of K plus plus where initialization is not random. But um, for now, let's assume that we initialized randomly K centroids. And then we want to assign 
each point to um, its centroid. Um, it can be done by minimizing this um, function, which we defined on the previous slide. It's also called inertia. inertia. Uh, so we, if we use the standard metric, um, Cartesian metric L2, then the solution for this uh, problem will be the following. So we assign class uh, K to our data point X. If it has the smaller distance to the centroid of class K. So this is the first step, which uh, we choose centroids. Then we label our data points according to the centroids. So closer to the centroid, then we assign this class. And on the second step, we recalculate the um, centroids. So we minimize this. Uh, here should be square, sorry, uh, as well. Distance, we minimize um, this functional. And the solution here will be just the center of mass, the mean of each coordinate. Um, I think we can look at the example now. To enlarge the code. So um, first, let's create the data points. So here are our data points. And now let's try to apply this um, k-mean algorithm. So first, we initialize randomly. Here I'm using five number of classes because it's um, um, we can see that. Uh, initialize five points on the plane. So with two coordinates randomly. And now, uh, apply k-means algorithm. Um, so the first picture will will be the initialization, and then you will see how this centroids will be adjusted. Oh, it looks like they were perfect from the beginning. So let's try another initialization. Again, now you can see that the initialization was not good enough. We can also see the, that they are moving. Let's try another initialization. Okay. It's difficult to see that they will move in again. Um, there is also a site with a visualization of k-means. It's easier to see there. Um, let's try to see this visualization. Um, 
Okay, here are the centroids. Now we will look at the adjustment. Um, first, the uh, algorithm assigns data points based on the distance to the center. Then we update the centers. Uh, you could see that it moved um, to the center of mass. Then we reassign the points according to the new centroids and, this, and then adjust the centroids again. And this is how this algorithm works. The next approach to clusterization is hierarchical um, algorithm. Uh, hierarchical algorithms are um, agglomerative or divisive. So in the case of agglomerative algorithms, we start from the clusters assigned to each data point. So if we have n data points, then we have n clusters. So it goes from uh, down to up. And um, in case of divisive algorithm, uh, we start from the cluster containing all the points, and then we divide this cluster. So um, today we will talk about agglomerative clustering. Uh, in, uh, so the first step, we say that each data point is a cluster. On the next step, we calculate the distances between the clusters, H and G, and we choose the uh, by the proximity, we choose uh, the closer clusters, and then we join these clusters, um, delete the previous G and H from our clusters, and add a new cluster, which is the join of these two. So we, um, we on each step, we decrease the number of clusters of clusters by one. And there are three uh, main measures for proximity of clusters. The one is called single link or single linkage. We take uh, the smallest distance between elements of two clusters. Um, this measure sometimes is not very good because if we have, for example, these data points, then, and we start from this cluster, then we always will add the next closer um, data point and um, for example, if we had also here data points, we will add also this data point and uh, probably it was better to assign to another class cluster. The other uh, measure is complete link uh, or complete linkage, which uh, takes the maximal distance between the clusters. So it finds the data points um, with maximal distance. For example, Assume 
we have these clusters one and two. Then if we measure the maximal distance, this point will be assigned to this cluster, but uh, probably it was better to assign to, to this long cluster because here the distance between this point and this point is, um, probably I should uh, draw one extra point. The, uh, the idea is that this distance is long, greater than this distance. So probably I could also add here points. I think you understand the idea. So the mostly used approach is the average link. The average link um, takes the distance between uh, the points of two different clusters and uh, normalize this by the number of elements. And I think we can look at the example. If I, yes, because then we have another algorithm. Yeah, but I didn't mention here by default, here is uh, the initialization in k-means in scikit-learn, uh, which is using k++ algorithm. We don't need to do random initialization. So let's, uh, ah. Probably let's try to do it again. It's better initialization. So usually it's better to use the built-in initialization of clusters. And then you can see the almost perfect from the beginning. And here is the value of inertia. And I also, before going to the hierarchical example, I didn't mention how we choose the number of clusters. Uh, let's run our algorithm for, class, for the number of clusters from one to 10 and calculate inertia. Inertia, you remember it's the squared distance um, to the centroids for each cluster. Here where you can see um, the values of this inertia, inertia for different number of clusters. And uh, the choice of the number of clusters usually is made by uh, this so-called elbow, uh, the point where the decreasing of our inertia uh, slows down. So in this case, it says that probably the better number of clusters is four, but we know that it should be five, but at least we have, um, any um, approaches to estimate the number of the better number of clusters. The other approach to estimate the number of clusters is uh, silhouette. Silhouette. Um, oh. 
is that? I think that uh, gives a, a very um, pretty pictures. Um, select coefficient uh, here denoted by this dashed line and um, these like knife figures correspond to each cluster. They show um, the width and length shows the balance of each cluster. And in this case, you can see that probably K equals five is the better um, choice. They have approximately the same width and uh, um, they all are crossed by silhouette coefficient. So it's another measure of the number of clusters. Okay, hierarchical cluster. Uh, let's see the example. For this example, I used um, the database <coughs> with iris. There are three, three um, types of irises, and we want to cluster them based on some features. So the hierarchical clustering can be described by dendrogram. dendrogram. Um, it starts <clears throat> from um, wait, hold it. Number of clusters should be free because we have we know that we have free irises. Okay, um, so you remember we start from the cluster assigned to each data point, and then we uh, decrease the number of clusters. And for example, if we want to choose, for example, three clusters, we should draw this line. And here we will have three groups. Um, this will be the first cluster, this will be the second cluster, and this group will correspond to the uh, short cluster. If we need, for example, four groups, we can um, draw another line, like here. And so we will get um, four, four clusters. So this is the idea of hierarchical clustering. Uh, another method is based on the density of data points, which is called dbscan, density-based uh, I don't remember dbscan. density-based spatial clustering. The idea of uh, this method is um, to classify our data points uh, by two parameters two hyperparameters. The first hyperparameter is the number of neighbors. So for example, in this 
if we look at this point, then um, we define the radius of this uh, neighborhood epsilon. And then we calculate the number of um, neighbors here. So this point has one, two, three neighbors. If this point, the other one, for example, this point, uh, We also have to include the uh, um, the center. So here we had four points. If we consider this point and draw this neighborhood of radius epsilon, um, I know it's still uh, three points. But if we consider point C and uh, draw the neighborhood of the radius epsilon, we will see here only one neighbor. And um, if the number hyperparameter, the number of neighbors was two or probably three, then uh, this point will not have this number of neighbors and we uh, classify this point as boundary po boundary point so we classify points in three classes interior point boundary point and outlier outlier doesn't have neighbors at all if we have outlier, then we start the new cluster. So this is the idea of density-based clustering. Um, we can look at the example, how it works. So let's use then epsilon the radius 0 0.9 okay we can start from one it will not be interesting so it classifies each point as interior or boundary or outlier but in this case the radius is large enough, so all points are there and have four neighbors. I think we, we don't need to include the centroid into the neighbors. So when it finds the outlier, it starts the new cluster and how it, it is how it works. Um, if we use the smaller radius, then the result will be my, very different. For example, you can see here the gap will stop here. And it started the new cluster. So this is the idea of VBSCAN clustering. So it's a little bit. So here we have two hyperparameters. It's not only the number of uh, neighbors, but also the radius. And uh, if we apply DBSCAN to our, our original data set, 
with different parameters, different epsilon, different number of uh, neighbors. You can see the uh, different uh, results of clustering. Um, yes, it's difficult to say which is better, probably this one with epsilon 0 0.2 and number of neighbors 10. Okay, um, let's go to the next method. The last, the upper last uh, method is graph based method. Um, so we can create a graph um, with vertices in our data points X. And then we can uh, join our data points with ages and assign weights to the ages. So it's a kind of the difference, uh, distance between the points. Um, usually the Gaussian um, weight is used for um, for graphs uh, weights. And uh, you can see that this is the number between zero and one. And if xm equals to xn, it's exactly one. So um, the higher weight corresponds to the higher similarity of our data points. Another graph, uh, K near neighbors graph is defined by uh, weights based on um, the information if um, the vertex X M is among the K nearest neighbors. If not, uh, the, there is no edge. This weight usually uh, can be assigned as one if there is edge, but also it can, it can be assigned as Gaussian weight. So we created a graph on our data points. Now we can cluster our data points um, just looking at the components of this graph. Um, but it's not uh, probably the best approach. We can also look at the minimal spanning tree um, to choose like two clusters um with closer distance but it will be equivalent to agglomerative clustering with a um, single linkage so the uh, approach which is used usually is called spectral clustering um, in spectral clustering with the, um, we define the weight between the clusters as the sum of weights between the elements of these clusters. And then uh, we try to minimize this uh, function, which is called ratio cut by analogy to cuts in the graphs. Uh, 
here you can see the weight between cluster and all the other points of the graph divided by the volume of the cluster and the sum over all clusters. Unfortunately, this problem is, is not um, is difficult to compute. It's a complete problem. So the following uh, observation was made to solve this uh, problem e efficiently. Uh, I want to remind you the definition of the degree of node. The degree is the sum of all weights uh, of ages adjacent with this node n. So we sum all the weights of all ages from this node. Then we can define diagonal matrix D with degree of the edges on the diagonal. And then we can subtract from this D the uh, number, uh, the uh, matrix with weights. It, this difference is called Laplacian of the graph. And this Laplacian of the graph has very nice, three nice properties. It's, um, it defines a quadratic form. This, it's also symmetric, of course, because the uh, weight matrix is symmetric. And it's positive, uh, non-negative defined because it's defined by this quadratic form and all the weights are positive, non, not negative. And it has very nice um, property, which is formulated in this theorem that uh, multiplicity of the eigenvalue zero coincides with the number of components of the graph. And the, um, if we um, calculate eigenvalues of the zero eigen, oh, sorry, eigen vectors associated with uh, zero eigenvalue, these eigenvectors will be indicators of each component of the graph. That means that they will have one if X belongs to the component and zero otherwise. Based on these properties, the spectral clustering algorithm can be summarized as follows. We assume that two data points are similar. So we want to see them in one cluster. Um, when the eigenvalue of the Laplacian of the matrix of the graph uh, eigenvector corresponding um, to the very small eigenvalue close to zero um, has the same components for these data points X and M. So this is the idea behind this algorithm. And then algorithm is very straightforward. We calculate Laplacian of the graph. So this um, degree matrix minus weight matrix. Then we uh, find first eigenvectors corresponding to the smallest eigenvalues. K is our hyperparameter, the number of clusters. And then we um, 
group this uh, the components of these eigenvectors. Um, to create the matrix and group them for using another clustering method, for example, for example, k-means. And uh, this will define the similar um, elements. So the idea of these eigenvectors is that we create new features for our data planes. So let's look at the example. Generative um, spectral clustering. So here I used number of components five, and here you can see the result uh, of spectral clustering. Um, I didn't mention. Um, here is in Cyclotron, there is a table uh, comparing different clustering algorithms. So you can see that some algorithms are very well for, are working well for um, like circles when we, in this case, it's spectral clustering and also density-based clustering, while k-means will separate this data set without uh, taking into account the distribution of our data. And another comment that I want to do, about k-means, I didn't, uh, I forget to tell that there is also k its algorithm. Uh, the k, in k-means, you remember, we reassigned the new clusters as the centroid of our data. If we reassign the center as the me median of coordinates, then the algorithm is called k meduits. Just um, sometimes you can hear this name. Okay, this is um, all about the standard. Um, clustering methods. The last method is uh, based on probability. It's called Gaussian mixture model or the mixture of Gaussians. The idea of this um, clustering method is to that we introduce K, uh, distributions, k okay, distributions. And then we take the mixture of these distributions, so the linear combination. For example, if we have um, multimodal distribution like, like, like this, Probably the good approach is to use two Gaussians and take the sum of these Gaussians. So this is P with parameters X uh, at one, and this is distribution with parameters at two. 
this is the idea of the mixture of probability densities. Um, the coefficients are sum, summing up to one. In the case of Gaussian model, uh, this parameters theta are mean and variance sigma, uh, covariance matrix. So it's the vector of parameters and each model um, has explicit form as uh, normal distribution with these parameters. So this sum can be calculated explicitly. And then we need to find the parameters, the parameters uh, mu, sigma, and pi. Um, usually we write the pi, the, this parameter pi, as probability of the hidden of the latent variable z. Um, so z equals k is our pi coefficient. And uh, this multiple is the uh, Gaussian with parameters k. This is the joint probability the, of our model and uh, parameter theta in this case has these parameters pi, mu and sigmas. Um, how to find these parameters, pi and sigma? Again, we can maximize the likelihood. As you remember, likelihood is the product of the uh, probability densities for each data point. And this probability, this uh, likelihood is called incomplete likelihood. Incomplete because we don't uh, have information about z here. And the joint probability on x and z is called complete data likelihood. But you remember z corresponds, corresponds to pi, parameter with, that we don't know. So we can optimize on the incomplete likelihood. And as you remember probably that this is the idea of expectation maximization algorithm. So we have this incomplete likelihood. Then we multiply and divide by, by unknown distribution on Z, Q of Z. And after uh, simplifications, it uh, will equal to so-called evidence lower boundary and um, Kulbach uh, labeler divergence, which is non-negative. So uh, it can be estimated from below by um, elbow. And here is the expression for this elbow. Um, and our goal is to determine also the distribution on Q and it can be done if we assign this divergence to zero, then this distribution Q coincides with this conditional distribution P of Z given X. So on E step, we uh, define this distribution Q of Z because um, this distribution depends on the data point. So we have extra index I here corresponding to the data point, which is the same as the conditional probability Z of, Z of Z given X, which can be written as follows using Bayesian formula by some 
formula. And here we all we know each component. This is the Gaussian. This is um, pi. This is the sum of pi times Gaussian. On the next uh, step maximization, we maximize this uh, lower boundary um, with respect to our parameters. And the result uh -huh. here is, yes, here is the explicit formula for Q, as I said, pi times uh, Gaussian. And here is the explicit formula for lower boundary. Um, the Ross fraction, logarithm fraction is the um, difference of logarithm. So uh, we're a little bit rearranged the terms. And if we use the expression for Gaussian, we will get this um, expression below. And then we can, we just need to take the derivative with respect to mu and with respect to pi k and with respect to sigma. And we will find the para new parameters, q, p, mu, and sigma. So this is the idea how to calculate the mixture of Gaussians. Now let's look how it works on practice. So th this is our model. We need also to scale our data uh, because otherwise, uh, the Gaussians will be very uh, long in one direction and short in another direction. So here is the result. And now let's look at the on the probability density a contour plot. So you can see here one Gaussian, second Gaussian, third, fourth, and here should be fifth because I used the number of Gaussians five. Um, based on this um, probability densities, we can assign each point to each cluster. Um, it's easy to do in cyclone because um, this parameter attributes predict proba, which returns the probability that our data point um, belongs to case cluster. Then we can take the maximum probability and it will be um, the number of cluster. Uh -huh. It will be, uh, actually predicts, does this. It returns the maximum uh, probability. Um, how, uh, uh -huh. the last probably thing that I want to mention, how to choose the parameters, the number of clusters for Gaussian mixture. It can be done uh, by uh, calculating the likelihood function, of course, but also there are two, um, Akiyaki information criterion and um, Basin uh, information criterion which are the approximation of so-called um, evidence. If you're, um, you can just look in Wikipedia, here is the definition of this IKI information criterion. 
twice number of clusters minus twice logarithm of the likelihood. Um, the last thing that I didn't mention, and again, we can see here that probably the better number is three, but I think in our case, four is better. Um, and the, the last uh, thing that I want to mention how to choose the number of clusters is so-called um, Bayesian Gaussian mixture models. It's, the idea is the same as in Bayesian uh, model selection for linear regression. If you remember, I covered it um, in the beginning. When we, assign, when we introduce the prior and diagonal matrix with alphas, and then if this alpha goes to infinity, we assume that we don't need this parameter. So they, here we can use the same idea and uh, to detect automatically which clusters we don't need to use. And it's also implemented in Cytopion. So I, I think that's it from me for today about clustering methods. And you can find this um, notebook by this link. So you can also play <clears throat> with the examples. Okay, thank you very much for an excellent presentation, Anton, once again. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, and I, I realized why people were late. Um, I guess um, people don't know that in in Western Europe, we set the clocks um, back one hour uh, last Sunday, um, which is why I, I assume a lot of people joined at 6.45 instead of uh, 5.45. I'll, I'll uh, make a note of that uh, in the next announcement. Um, so Anton uh, sent me slides, so I'll be posting them in the deep learning group. And um, I guess I wish you all a good evening or a I good think day. there is a question. Okay, is from, there a question? I, don't, I see just a hand up from Newton. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Newton. Okay, please. I have a question I want to ask. Is there, sorry, is there a way I could get the PDF of this um, book in full, the PDF, like the full PDF itself? Yes, the book is available online at the book's website. Um, it, it's actually posted in the deep learning group on Facebook. Um, but if you Google the title of the book, you should find the, the book's uh, website. There's a draft uh, PDF copy of the of the full book there. Thanks. I, I, I sent the link in the chat in Zoom chat. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Anton. Okay, so if there's nothing else, um, I guess we'll meet back here next week. We're, we're almost done with the book. We have uh, two chapters to go. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you once again, Anton. It was a great presentation. So have a good You're night welcome. or have a good night or a good day, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.